Hello and welcome back to the Waiting Native Chronicles. What I'm going to share with you today is something I think you're going to find very interesting, especially those of you who want to learn a thing or two about underwater beaver trapping. What I'm going to show you is uh, being taught by Ross Hinter of the Alberta Trappers Association. And Ross is a real authority, a vast amount of knowledge he has to share. And uh, for those of you who want to learn something new, you're going to pick up a lot of info on this video. And those of you who are just interested in learning the habits of this uh, amazing animal called or beavers, uh, there's so much to learn from this. And trappers are the ones that they understand the, the animals that they trap to a degree that uh, no one else really can, I, I think. Because it's practical, hands-on experience seeing how things happen in the wild. So uh, without any further ado, let's get into this. And I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, click like and subscribe if, if you appreciate this kind of content. Put some comments in the comment section. Uh, some feedback. Let's uh, hear what you have to say. There's, uh, there's some probably be some differences of opinion on a few things, but uh, uh, I'll say again that Ross is a guy who who you should know. So uh, listen up, folks. Catch you at the end. Have you ever, do you ever use uh, like the flexible pipes and just kind of feel through? Yeah, I'm going to show you that. Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, so that way you can kind of, first, your first hint is this, and then if you want to find the exact opening, you can do that with a pipe then, eh? Yeah. yeah um, the guys that I've worked with over the years say, you don't need that, and I never had that before. I just would find a bent stick. Oh, yeah. It's way easier for the... I spent 10 or 12 bucks and I had enough for about eight of us to have a half round. Yeah. And uh, it's so much easier. But they they chisel down and they feel the ditch. Oh. You say, okay, that's where the run is. But they can get around it. So if you can get close to the lodge like this, the hole doesn't necessarily go straight. Oh. <laughs> it could go on this angle or that angle. And you don't know. You, you don't know. But if you take that piece of plastic pipe. Yeah. It, so yeah. I'll show you what I mean. This one will leave a piece of trap. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, it's just skinny stuff like that, eh? Yeah. I was thinking bigger pipe, but no. Well, I you can use it. whatever you want, but I yeah. just found the water line. Uh, aluminum pipe with a blue plastic. Uh-huh. So oh. using these in here because that stick would have sat right in the water, and then when you're trying to chisel it out, it's a pain in the ass. Uh-huh. Uh, let's rephrase that. It's a 
pain in the butt. <laughs> Almost <laughs> <everyone. Yeah. laughs> Anyway, that just lifts the stick up. for two days huh. right sometimes oh. even three but no more than that because they water lock so if I think I found the run and I come in here with this I can feel it feel if it was long way. enough I could poke them in the ass with it pretty much eh? it goes straight up that the was the yeah so it's not it's not exactly where you think see I'm hitting the wall yeah. here I'll tell you something, about Ross. This camera is waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I can stick it down there and take a look. Yeah. <laughs> when you take a dark time, you may find out there was something at <laughs> Yeah, I think it's right inside the, the, <laughs> the lodge. Anyway, you sometimes have to do quite a bit of logging. And, you know, you have to take this with a grain of salt in the... Nothing is exact. away saying Ross says you got to do this or Ross says that's how you this is for when you're right at the law if I'm gonna catch a beaver at the food pile I'm not on the bottom because he ain't gonna be on the here bottom. you're on the bottom here I'm on the bottom because he's coming out like that right out from the oh yeah if you want to catch him so they make their entrance as low as they can yeah, yeah. Okay. oh okay yeah, yeah because that's okay. uh, anyway so Ooh. that's how I do it so you if, if, if you take this and you bend it here, you're never going to find the run. you got to go right down to the bottom. Oh. Okay, and then uh -huh. and you, you know, you feel comfortable that you've lined yourself up with it. Okay. So How long did it take you to chisel that out the other day? Too long. <laughs> Piss me off. Like, you know, it's worse here even because there's only two, I'm assuming there's only two beaver and she or him kind of confirms it yeah because they're young so this is their first year to mate uh, so uh, they will have made it they generally mate in, uh, as a matter of fact if you want to catch the adults in january a lot of times you won't catch them at the lodge because they go on a romantic deal oh and uh, the young will try to find them and they'll, they'll yards or not well 50 yards or so from the lodge that's where you find them. Yeah, so don't give oh, up right there okay when, when you first are doing this because it has more experience than just about all the other ones that I lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, that water oh, is yeah. plastic, but it's got that metal on the inside. It's tubing. Is it? Yeah. This stuff here? Uh, no. Oh. The blue stuff. What is this called? Uh, pack, 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 pack pipe? I'm tempted to put my camera down in there, but I think it'll be too dark and you won't see anything anyways. Uh, I still have like half a roll of this stuff under oh, my house. Oh, okay. So oh. The right that's the stuff you need to bring with us to the, that's a hard part of to the line.
um, I don't know if I need to tell you this, but if you're working with 330s and you don't have safeties, then shame on you. Just take it from somebody who knows. Yeah, uh -huh. Let's talk about your horror story. You're operating on borrowed time, you're going to get it. Yep. I learned after that, now whenever I'm doing it, well, I always have my setters open and beside yeah. 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 Yeah, I had setters with me too. When you watch the film, they basically were explaining to you that the benefits of putting the trigger on the bottom as versus putting it on the top. Uh -huh. And so, and I agree with that in theory, but I kill a lot of beaver in the spring, so whatever I couldn't get during the winter or whatever, if the object is to clean them out, I go back in the spring and I, and I take them out. Uh -huh. And when you put the trigger on the bottom on a dam set, the, the trees, the sticks and everything oh. come in and fire your crap. Yeah. So I always put it on the top, uh. and I, but I put it over to the side, like he was showing you in the, in the yeah. film there. So okay. uh -huh. I, I just want you to know why I That's a good idea. think the yeah. way I do. And That's just to let the breed to get through, you mean, eh? More for... Pardon? Just, more so that the breed doesn't set it off. You mean yeah, and through. then, but when a beaver does go through, uh -huh. this this isn't going to hit him in the back, eh? Oh. And the dog. Like, Belial tried to accommodate for that, and they flatten these. In theory, it's good, but that Belial hits so frickin' hard. See, look at the slip. Uh -huh. Yeah, That's you a get way. a clip. And it's almost impossible not to, because they've... They've made these traps so freaking powerful to be humane <laughs> that they're going to make an endangered species out of the rest of us. No well, yeah. that's like the power ramps. Yeah. They're going to make a lot of sterile men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, holy well, shit. The, the, the reason for that is, is that the man buys it, takes all the packaging and throws it in the garbage, and then tries to set it and it clocks him in the nuts. Yeah. So he can sing in the women's choir, or he takes out a few teeth, and then his wife gets the instructions out and says, Oh, honey, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, why are you using the first space? Is it more of a hair trigger instead nope. of the second one? Second nope. one's more hair trigger? Or does second it matter? One be a little harder. The only reason that I always find it amazing everybody's theory on these things, but yeah. basically, so the, 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 the far trigger is, it, it makes no difference. Our trigger, especially if you're sitting on a beaver dam, yeah. it gives it more stability because it's wider That's spread. Right. It'll sit on there a little bit better on the right, and then I stick my sticks in. But for this part, I put it there. If I'm going to put a stick through and use it as a baited set, then I might use that last notch. Uh -huh. okay, it's just that. up to you as a trapper. Yeah, some guys, I don't know, everybody has their own theory, but. Yeah, I guess for a bait, a bait stick, it would be handy to be able to adjust that space. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, that second yeah, it's, mm -hmm. You notice that, like on the way we used to catch Martin, we just flatten the spot on the tree and then bend the springs down and run the stick through it. Oh, yeah. And it would give the trap more stability in the furthest spread. You know, just sitting on there. Okay. But in this case, we don't need bait or anything. We're just taking advantage that we found where the plays out right. If he doesn't get killed with that one, we'll kill him. The other one in this one. So if I come in today, and especially if we're here talking like this, um, I won't come back for two days. I'll just leave it alone. And hopefully the ice fishermen don't come here. And yeah. Those guys were here. Yeah, they were right here. Away. Three vehicles. Uh -huh. They drilled about 30 holes around the vehicles. And I thought, so I'm quite profound here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you know, you see just in cartoons. <laughs> so I'll show you what... Cars are going through this way. Yeah. How do I figure this out now? I get my stick. Put out of my way for now. Hang on there for a sec, will ya? So what I do, now should you have the trigger facing that way or should you have the trigger facing this way? Does it make any difference? It does. 
Are you going to get it leaving or get it coming back? Yeah, so which is it? I would put it in just like that and get it leaving. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I We had a big discussion on it one time. And so for the next two years, I kept a record of it. And it's hard until you get used to it. You pull the beaver out. And you have to think, well, how the hell do I know which way he was going now? Yeah, but you can. Yeah. Once you realize it, it's not that hard at all. And so I was taking a lot of beaver in those days. And 72% I got coming in. Coming in. Huh. Now, how could you Again. tell? Well, because when the trap goes off, I'll show you. Maybe we brought which, one which over there. The okay. That sprung. And I'll show you how, how you figure that out. Okay. Yeah, it takes, it takes, because you're dinging around with thinking, well, how the hell would Ross know whether it was going this way or that way? So what I did was I put uh, all my triggers, my theory was I'm going to catch them coming out. They proved me wrong. So that means that there has to be more runs than the ones that I think. He's going oh, the yeah. stands and yeah. stuff there. So they have sort of and favorite uh, exits and favorite entrances, sort of. Maybe so, but they, it's like snaring if... What I learned over the years is that when I see a really key spot I'm going along the edge of a field, and I go, oh shit, I can see where they're coming right here. Uh -huh. That's the poorest place to put my set, depending uh -huh. on which way they're traveling. Because if they're coming out, it's the same with deer. Just before they come out to the clearing, they hesitate. They listen, they watch, and they walk really slowly before they make a commitment. When they're coming out, right? So, same type of a theory here or not. Uh -huh. But I wrote that down for two years and it was 72% of them I caught going back into the lodge. Uh -huh. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, they're going to die pretty quick anyway, but I just wanted to know. Yeah. This and is a lodge, point, but though, they could have lots of bank deads. They're coming back often with a stick in their mouth. Right? Yeah, well, that, that could be, but when you get most of that, is they'll have a garbage run up. You see, I did so much work with Transalto when they took the dams out, I went back and I thought, well, for no wonder it took me so long. You know, there's like eight runs that I couldn't find. And then there'll be one spot and there's shit everywhere. Beaver eat their own crap, just like rabbits. Oh, yeah. But on the second go around, they will not relieve themselves in the lodge. They uh -huh. go out. Uh -huh. And when they took all that out and all the water was gone, it was a massive toilet of where they've been crapping and everything. And that's where all the old sticks were shoved. So I call that the garbage room now, okay. where they push out all the... Uh -huh. So it's like the otters too, right? Otters well, have otters have to put it on sort of make. Yeah, they do, but it's, it's almost like a statement to them as well, because they use okay. their, their shit. That's from the I'm making that. their territory, I guess. The, the shit is underneath the water. Yeah, yeah because they come out to really yeah. yeah. So, what I do. And you put the trigger on the top. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. off to the side. Off to the side. So, I lower this down until I feel it hit. Uh huh. Touch the bottom. There. Now I'm on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put my stick here and then I'm going to lift this up just an inch because I don't want it in the muck. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So I like enough so I can go around twice and then wrap it. I never use one single strand of wire for anything. No. I, I have double wire for everything. Like this, go around twice and then wrap it. Okay. And always double strand. I always double strand. Yeah, some yeah, of the guys just... they, they, uh, they twist it like a, a, a twister thing, right? Yeah. But <laughs> you see how these sticks lift it up, and if if they weren't in there, this would be right right on the edge of the water, and then I'd bust the stick trying to chisel it if it oh. had a lot of ice. Yeah. yeah right. that makes sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fell in like this, he was getting up, and he went in, and he started flopping all around, and then it occurred to him, that's not a good idea, and wham, the oh, trap, trap right got him on the leg, oh, got off on his leg, and he was walking. Oh yeah, he's a big one. Yeah. You think he'd have got caught?
what I look for, it'll be easier to show you on the other one, but if you try to imagine um, when a beaver swims up to the lodge, there's no water or ice, and they're they're working, they're working, they're bringing, piling up stuff, and that when they come up to the lodge, they swim up like this and then they dive, and the water slaps up against the side of the lodge, and so when you have a spot like this, you know there's no run here because they've been going up and down here, right? But often just to the side of it of that is where you're going to find your run. And on a good year, you hit the bang, 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 and then boom, you'll hear this boom. And that, that low, hollow tone tells you that there's a run right close here. So that's what you do when you're sounding the ice. Right? Uh -huh. You just use your chipper for that, I guess. Yeah, yep. I don't approach any lodge in the winter without that thing in front of me. So I hit it hard and I make sure the ice is safe. Yeah. I keep going. And that's the only safe way to be able to approach the lodge. This year is an exception. Uh huh. We're a walk right on top of the bait pile. So you're saying that the fact that it's kind of a wash on the side of the lodge here, that indicates to you that there's the entrance on either side because they're... Well, there might be one side or the other. It's There's no guarantees in this. I'm just uh, saying, just i got to start somewhere. It's a hint. <laughs> what about, I've heard that the main entrance is, is usually off like a hollow facing what direction, I can't remember. <clears throat> so which way is this way? Yeah. Oh, the preferred direction? Is it the preferred direction for the main entrance? No. I wish the worst thing to do. I only had one place to start, but there is absolutely two bucks doing that. Sometimes no rhyme reason. Look at If you look here, that's why it was hard for me. I was going to start right here. But to me, that's a that's an obvious. Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. You can see that it goes underneath the log. Yeah. So when I come back, yeah, and that was what screwed me up. I'm not going in and out of there. Uh -huh. There's no bubble. The way so the I trees are out, and then I find all this. That's like I'm shoveling. I find all of this. I think, well, what the heck? Well, they proved my theory wrong. Yeah, but so what? When you don't know and you got to start somewhere because you can't find any bubbles, that's that's where I would have started. In this case, I'd have been pissed off because I didn't find the run. Yeah. But you got to start somewhere. So the best, like with hunting, you're scouting ahead of time to find the right place. The best thing to do if you're going to do beaver is scout to fall if you and can. get your get your sticks in. On yep. The runs. Uh huh. Okay. It's dynamite then. Okay. Then okay. when you come back, you're not wasting your time chiseling all over the bloody place trying to find their entrances. So in the summer, when there's no ice, then the way you're trying to figure out the uh, entrances. Is that just by looking for the, the runs? Uh, well, just the, the bubbles. Deep spot, or just the bubbles? Yeah, so say you come out in November. If, if, if there's no ice at all, let's say. Well, if there's no ice, then yeah, you're just going to have to you, you, use that thing. Yeah, yeah just use, use that use hose, that. eh? Yeah. Oh, okay. you got to stay on the lodge. So you're bending, that's what we did one year, and then you're, bend, you're trying to bend over the lodge. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense because. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's, that's yeah. how I trapped the city of Calgary and Edmonton. Oh, you're using that thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you can use that for bike tents too? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you can't find them. Uh -huh. So you're going all along and you know, you're down here because you're not in the water. Yeah. So I'm thinking, wow, that looks pretty good. And look for places like this where the water's been washing up. And after I started working here, you can see that this all came in. Before I even came here, uh -huh. it's starting to get weak, it's all cracked right here, so there's a good indication that they were using that again, because they didn't just build this. This is an old lodge that they've fixed up, uh -huh. remodeled. I mean, they're young newlyweds, and this year he'd probably tell her, okay, I'm going to build you a new home, and we're going to have a nicer place. And yeah. <laughs> Where did they go to do their bench? Is it near the top? Well, it isn't always. Yeah, it's out there, and you'll see it in the normal room. In the real morning, well, the evening is 
the best. You'll see the steam from the heat coming up out of there. My kids used to call it the beaver chimney. <laughs> and it'll frost around it. Uh -huh. That's how you know if it's active. Coyotes are the links of lay there and just enjoy the smell. Yeah. yeah. It brings everything. All the carnivores in the country are coming in. Now that we did that, and we switched that all around, we put all that scent up on top of the ice. Uh -huh. You can bet the coyotes will come and they'll spend oh. some time in here. Right? So good time. if you're trying to catch some coyotes too, oftentimes they'll set hold right on Oh, they'll walk right up on the right up there because they're picking up all the smells. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. The next place will be a little easier for, for you to envision how they swim up and the water swims against it. But if you look at the lodge and you got flat spots, that's where I start. If I can't see any bubbles. Uh -huh. But if you've got a slope, Be a hole right underneath of it, or they wouldn't be able to go up that ramp. Yeah, yeah, right. I have field notes, like I have a little, a little, no, I don't have it, but I have a little book, and I have a, uh, what do you call that stuff? It's like a pencil, but it, uh, oh, um, it's like graphite or something. Oh, you can write on the wet paper, even. that's what I keep, and I make notes. I put uh, weasel tracks or mink, like the mink tracks all around, or a fox. Yeah. Or coyote. I make notes of all of that for the customer. And then I tell them that I caught two at this lodge, a male and a female. She had not lacked it, like she's never had young. Uh -huh. And they find that fascinating because then they realize that you're, you're professional, you care about those. Oh, stuff. yeah. yeah. The extra money. Yeah. You're going to get into that kind of work, right? It probably makes them feel they get more for their money too. <laughs> it does. And I do a like when I did the city of Greenwood, I had nine pages. Pictures of all the beaver cuttings, everything. I took pictures yeah. and I put that in there and the whole You're gonna have to start wearing the body cam now. What I was gonna say with that, when you've got young ones you can't tell a male from a female. Because oh. they're smarter than us, they tuck their nuts up inside. If oh. you're going to live under the ice, I, fuck, I bet you that's handy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but a female, if she's had a young already, yeah. you'll be able to tell she's been nursed in the oh. past. Her teats will show. Uh -huh. You'll be able to see that right away. So you know it's a female. Okay. Uh -huh. Other than that, you don't know for sure. You catch the female. The male's about the same size. It's pretty easy to assume he's a male. And you can tell when you skin him when you take the caster out because you'll have the oil glands, the castor glands, and if you push at the top, his testicles will pop out. I always oh. thought, man, that's a marvel. I gotta get a set like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>